and welcome to a brand new series where we're actually going to make something. And this time, since we're actually making something, I actually need a camera. I mean, need a cameraman. Let's see the cameraman over here. I'm Wait. the cameraman. And I'm going to film this whole adventure. It's going to be a... This is part one. A multi-part series in which he's going to make lightning in his own home. Okay, we don't need the part about the part one, but the rest of that is good. It's recording right now, so this is the intro. Why'd you push the button? You told me you weren't recording. Hey, it was good. This is <laughs> this whole thing is working right now. So it's just, not working right now. It's because working. we're still recording. It's okay. <laughs> just explain. Explain to the viewers. Okay, so the idea is we make a Van de Graaff generator. Um, if you don't know what that is, think of a small Tesla coil that you could touch and it won't kill you. It is a metal ball where... It makes lightning. Yeah, electricity <laughs> is running through it and when you put another metal ball next to it, it flows through. It's basically positive and negative and ground and all that. I need to brief you on electricity. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> so that's what, that's what it is. Um, and I guess we'll get started. So I guess I should explain just how this actually works to all you guys who might not know. So what we have here is a diagram of all the guts and whatnot of a Van de Graaff generator. And as you see, we have over here, we have this belt going between two uh, rollers. It's kind of funny how this works, but if you get two rollers that are different in this triboelectric series over here like this so you have one on this end and another on this end what will happen is if you have an insulator roll across those as soon as it pulls away from the surface it will either gather or leave behind a certain amount of electrons depending on how far it is on either end of this scale here so up at the top we have something like uh, Teflon so that'll grab all the electrons from the roller no wait that's backwards they'll take all the electrons off the roller and put it out here onto this sphere to be collected and then something like nylon down here at the bottom which will put electrons on the roller to be taken up to the, um, the Teflon roller what happens is as these electrons go around, you have electrons coming down, which, uh, or you have the lack of electrons coming down and getting distributed along the ground, and you have electrons getting shoved up here onto the sphere, and that causes a really, really massive voltage difference, some in the range of like hundreds of thousands of volts. Like the one we're working on building is probably going to be about 200, maybe 300,000 volts. Which, just to give you scale, if you live in the U.S. anyway, the power coming out of your wall is only 120 volts. I think in Europe it's usually 100, but I'm not entirely sure. But still, this is thousands of times bigger. In fact, actually it is a thousand times more voltage than what's coming out of your wall. Thankfully though because the um, capacitance of this sphere which is how much it can hold on to as far as sheer volume of electrons is really low. Now uh, that, that sounds kind of confusing. So quick little clarification voltage is the difference in electrons between any two places like the ground and the sphere and then the capacitance is how much it can hold and the theory is if it works perfectly and I don't break anything we should be able to make big long lightning strikes like this one depicted here cuz that's fun good zap people I guess we gotta move on to shopping list now. So I'll see you guys over on the shopping list. Mm, bye. Alrighty, so here we have our shopping list for all the pieces we're gonna need for this 
Van de Graaff lightning thingamajigger we're building. And, uh, wanna, wanna go through what these are? Well, um, obviously it should be on your screen. Um, <laughs> no! <laughs> you can see you need piping, plywood, thread, well, nuts, you need lots of nuts. Mm. Um, that could be taken out of context so easily. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so what we got here is this sphere up here is going to be your electron collector. We'll get into what that means sometime later. Basically it's what's going to hold the charge and PVC and whatnot. These are all basically basic things of building stuff. The thing that's really important here is these Teflon and nylon rollers. If you change out those parts, some weird could happen and it might not work. Basically, though, is on this chart, we have the positive end and we have a negative end. You see down here we have Teflon and up here we have nylon. So you just want your two rollers to be as far apart on these scales as possible. And as far as how it's going to look... Well, it'll look a little something like that. Um, middle. It pretty much looks like a disco ball on top of a table with a uh, pipe holding it up. You know, it's not a super complicated design. I mean, we could create it out of basic shapes um, in this program. So. And, yeah, that middle one is just... That's what it looks Whee! like. Yeah, and these two on the sides, this is going to be just a standing grounding sphere. And this is on the rod. Basically, this one, to, you hold it and you get close and it makes lightning. This one, you place next to it and it makes lightning. But this is the middle one that we're going to be building for the most part. Yeah. So, hopefully we didn't just lose you there. But, um, let's go shopping! Want to go shopping, Justin? Yeah, dude. Okay. Cut to shopping scene. <laughs> You sound like an editing robot. Okay, well... Cut let's... to shopping scene. I, I need one of those directors thing. This, this... They can't see you, Patrick. Okay, we're gonna go shopping. Bye. So first we went to White City Metals to pick up some copper screen to make our brushes out of and some nylon to make our rollers, but that ended up being a big waste of time. Apparently it's really hard to find nylon. Yeah. None of that is nylon. All that plastic. Yeah. Then we went to Lowe's and we used the contractor entrance. Cause we just we special like that. Yeah. Special. And then we picked up a light switch, just standard stuff you see in your house for light bulbs and a nice long extension cord. Please make sure it's at least six feet. More would be better, but we're kind of working on a tight budget, so we just went with the cheapest one we could find. Also, make sure that it has all three of these pins, because two pins won't work. We need that third grounding pin. That's really important. And then after picking that up, Dog had to take a drink. <laughs> He was thirsty. And we started getting bored, so we dorked out grabbing our plexiglass and our vinyl. You don't really need this much, but that's all they had at Lowe's. The place that's supposed to have everything only has this giant chunk of vinyl, like, made to floor floors with. Gah. You really only need a piece about two inches long or about two inches wide and the length really depends on how big you make the thing so then we picked up some copper pipe it's about three quarter inch diameter and two feet long and picked up big old hunk of PVC this chunks five feet long three inch diameter then we went to the hack lab as I like to call it the place of awesomeness Cause seems like everything awesome happens there, including funding for this uh, Van de Graaff. Does that mean that they sponsored this video? 
Hmm. How to make a Van de Graaff generator sponsored by Rogue Hack Labs. Now I feel obligated to do that at the beginning of every episode. Anyway, and while we're there, we picked up some wire. This is what we're going to end up using for our brushes. For our brushes. Because they just, that's, that's what we had. Uh, it doesn't have to be braided wire, but make sure it's made out of as many strands as possible. So if you don't get braided wire, try to look for something like boat wire that tends to be made of more strands than your standard like housing wire. And if all else fails, you can use copper screen. That, that works too. After that, we picked up some quarter inch rod and quarter inch bolts and nuts. Got about got 18 nuts, 10 bolts, and I think that's a half foot long piece of rod. Then picked up some half inch rods, big stuff, along with 16 bolts and 16 16 nuts, sorry, and 16 washers. Make sure you have enough rod to make at least four nine inch sections. To, you'll you'll get to why later. And after that, we picked up the most interesting of all interesting things. A chunk of plywood. Because it's so incredibly interesting. I just love plywood. It's awesome. Make sure you got enough to make at least two square feet. And a couple bed casters. We're going to be cutting the metal off these to make our rollers out of. But they're just standard stuff you'd like tack onto the bottom of a bed to make it roll around. And of course our two spheres. The bigger one we've got here is 16 inches. The smaller one is 6. So yeah. We're going to be using the bigger one on the actual generator. The smaller one's just going to be the grounding sphere. And of course you're going to need a motor. I think I scrounged this one out of a humidifier. Or just a bathroom fan. Either way, if you don't buy a motor outright, just really any appliance that plugs into the wall that has a motor in it, you can take that motor out and it'll work just fine. And of course, you're also going to need some Teflon tape and some nylon tape. The uh, They're commonly referred to as plumbing tape and electrical tape, respectively. So if you can't find any... Or if the con you just ask the guys working at the shop if they have plumbing tape and electrical tape, they'll find it for you. And that's about it. So, see you guys later. Bye. Bye. And that's almost becoming a meme, only it's not funny. Bye. I stand by my terrible memes. Bye.